pay attention. Here's here's the money. That's a comforting story, but it isn't true. Hard rock lunch box. Ah, man, what is up, everybody? And I apologize for having that volume down. Trying to work on a couple things here in studio. Uh, my record. First of all, let me see if I'm recording. Yeah, 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 yeah. A little peek behind the curtain. I'm working on my backup recorder because I, I just having so many problems with the front up recorder. I got <laughs> backup up front recorder. I don't I don't know. So yeah, welcome to another uh, edition of the Hard Rock Lunchbox. How is everybody today? I apologize for being late. I'm not feeling all that fantastic today. Just, uh, I don't know what it is. Uh, actually, I, I know what it could be. I, I know all the things contributing to it. I just don't know what the final straw is. I will tell you, I hurt... Um, in old man news, I hurt my back last week. And I've just, I didn't even do anything. Like, I didn't do, like, a thing. Like, it was, like, a combination of things. And then it just finally was like, you know what, dude? You're also fat. So uh, we're going to hurt your back for a week. So it's actually been kind of slow going. Uh, It's that bottom band around your back. Like, it just sore. So anyway, (laughs) I was was having a conversation about... uh, weight loss in my kind of weekly pseudo therapy session and I was saying to the guy I was like you know when you're like 50 pounds overweight like I am like it's just like it's like carrying weights around with you and I said like if dude if I told you I spent all day long carrying around two 25 pound medicine balls everywhere I went upstairs downstairs I'm like you'd be like dude that's awesome you'd be sending me motivational gifs uh, gifs and stuff like that and like but since, just because it's on the inside, like everyone's just like, "Oh no, you're just fat." Like it's not, you know, man. It's just as much work. I don't. I understand. My muscles are still carrying around that extra weight. You want to take some scrawny bitch and give her like fifty pounds worth of weights? Like, yeah, man. It's exactly the same thing. That's that's me. That's me. I'm your host. I am a scrawny bitch. I'm just carrying all my weight on the inside. Anyway. <laughs> How is everybody doing today? Is everybody everybody doing all right? It was it's been beautiful outside in the northeast uh, up until today, and today is rainy because we're about to go into August. Apparently, yeah, it's going to be like ninety something degrees over the weekend. My daughter's sweet sixteen is this weekend, so I am super excited to have it be ninety degrees. She asked me what I was wearing to it, and I just basically looked at the shorts and tank top I was in. And I was like, probably this. And, I don't know that she said no to it, but I don't know that I could wear anything else. I mean, seriously, like, even in my best shape, I do not handle 90-degree weather. Like, there is a reason I don't, I'm not one of those people It's like, man, I got to get to Florida. Like, I definitely don't get, get got to get to Florida at all. Like, I never got to get to Florida. Like, that's, that's going to be like a stated thing. Like, I'll go, like, on occasion, but I don't got to go, you know what I'm saying? So, like, I like, I like it cold. Um, cool. I like it cool. I like I like shorts and hoodie. If you can put me in shorts and a hoodie like all year round, like that I feel like that's what the Carolinas used to be, but now they're getting warmer because, you know, climate change isn't real. Right? So, um Yeah, man. I don't know. Uh so yeah, I don't know what I'm gonna wear. Uh in hurricane news, I know you guys have been dying to hear some hurricane news. Um the, uh, the Hurricanes made it to the final round of the Long Island Cup. Thank you very much. Yeah. I cannot tell if this microphone is just excessively loud today. I'm just going to turn it down. Actually, if you're if you're part of the conversation in there uh, on 99WNRR, and you can tell me if my microphone is excessively loud, I'm going to be turning it down because it's just it's too loud for me. Um, yeah, I started out by saying like I've been trying to make some changes around here sonically. Um, I'm going to be moving some of the servers out so that the constant noise, which is, you know, you can hear like here. Listen. Hear that underlying sound? Yeah, it's not a lot, but it's something. And it's annoying to me, at least. So I'm going to try and get rid of it. 
All right. Thank you, Donna. Uh, Donna is in the chat and says the vocal uh, mic sounds okay. So I will just proceed uh, with caution or without caution. With caution to the wind. Shall we do that? I should look that up. I don't know why that's a thing. Um, oh, we should probably do some housekeeping, right? So brand new episode of the Top 20 is out. It is the Top 20 where I uh, talk about uh, what would you prefer, uh, you know, getting effed over like really quickly or you want like the slow build where you kind of keep getting effed over and stuff like that and i i don't know i don't even remember honestly what i said um you know uh blah 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 would you like to be getting effed over the entire time and not know it until specifically until it spectacularly explodes in front of you uh in front of your face or would you like to just be aware? Yeah, I'm not I'm not sure. I feel like I, I put that up on the chat and they could figure it out for themselves. I don't know what the answers were. I did not get a chance to check into the comments on YouTube on StrangerHood TV, so I will do that um, probably later today. Uh, in other StrangerHood TV news, and Bacon is my podcast, uh, they have the full interview with Jay from Orgy, um, and they have the Shady AF preview with Jay and Joey Nunn. I was watching that the other day. I thought that was pretty good. Uh, Joey's always a good guest. Uh, even if he's sometimes part of the problem that I was referring to just a couple minutes ago. Uh, they have a full interview with Glacier Veins. They're a band I've never heard of, so I'm likely to check that out. They also have seven questions with Mike. Uh, I'm going to go with Zimmer. Zimmer. And he is one of the dudes from the So What Festival, which Bacon is my podcast. will be traveling to to interview a bunch of bands. So keep, uh, keep up with all your BIMP news because there's a lot happening there. And to be perfectly honest with you, I don't know what's public and what's not. So just keep uh, up with this. Uh, keep up with that information, and you can always help them out on their Patreon account, and I'm sure find out more, plus see all kinds of weird tastings and special stuff, and blah, 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 blah. Uh, uh, dates coming up, uh, June 25th, the Razorblade Diaries Live. I'm going to start selling tickets probably by this weekend. I will let you know when they come out. Again, they're going to be super limited edition. It looks like it's going to be like 45 or 50 tickets, because that's where we're going to be at for capacity in this particular location, so make sure you don't sleep on that. Uh, July 8th, we'll be at 89 North in Patchogue. We're going to be there with uh, Craving Strange. I think Maggie Lex is still playing, and then, of course, our very own Giovanna is opening the show. And then it looks like it's official, and I, I think I can start announcing this. We're going to be playing the Queens Rock Fest in Forest Hills Park in Forest Hills, Queens. That is going to be the very next day, actually the very next afternoon, July 9th. Uh, we'll be there with our friends at Oren. Uh, Reality Suite will be there as well. A couple other bands you may or may not have heard of, but it's going to be a big free show at the Forest Hills Band Shell. That's going to be a lot of fun. It's always cool every year, and we're uh, excited to be a part of it this year. So that's going to be July 9th. And honestly, that looks like it like it for us for a while. We've got a show booked in October out in Pennsylvania somewhere, and we'll probably start booking from the, some of the fall, but I'm not entirely sure how much more... Uh, the summer we're going to do we might uh, i know i was looking to do like another local show like maybe the village pub um i don't think the maybe we'll do a barnum ballroom i don't even know if barnum ballroom is still there um i, I put kaz in charge of that so i guess we'll find out if maybe something happens but i don't know uh we've got a lot of recording and mixing and working and stuff to do this week so uh, this, not this week this year so it might just be you know whatever um as far as shows go but uh, obviously we'll take any good opportunity and if bands want to play with us of course we'll try and work that out but uh, as i said last week generally speaking what bands like to do is they like to say they'd like to work with us and then when it comes down to it they don't bother so there's that and still don't know what that is so feel free to tell us you want us to play with you and then don't uh, follow through on it and it looks like with the exception of craving strange that is pretty much the the way things are rolling post-COVID, so thank God for that. Um, bah, 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 bah. um, so I actually had this thing that I had wanted to talk about for a couple of weeks, and it looks like I'm not going to get to it today either. <laughs> um. There was this uh, draft legislation that was brought up, and they were trying to uh, ban the Bible in Florida because it was too woke, which I thought was really, really funny, and a really funny response to 
um, the book bans that just went down in Florida. And by the way, if you aren't, if you are having too much trouble keeping up with Florida ridiculous conservative Republican news, like don't be ashamed. It's really quite a lot. Uh, I I have a total hard on for Florida and not the good kind. And I just a lot of it just finds its way to me. But yeah, they were banning books not too long ago because of critical race theory, which. Dude, if you first of all, like I, I spent a lot of time a couple weeks ago explaining critical race theory and also why you know white people are so afraid of it um, and are making it into the boogeyman that it just isn't. Like, if you're afraid of information, like I got to tell you, like you, you, you are the problem, right? Information is our friend. If you don't like information because it just doesn't jive with what you think, you are the problem. Uh, so yeah, they they banned a whole lot of books in Florida uh, for being too woke. Obviously, a uh, critical race and uh, all the indoctrination that apparently everybody's doing with their children. I got news for you: if you just spent more time with your kids, wouldn't have this problem. But if you're going to just ship them off to school and then ship them off to sports and then ship them off to Boy Scouts and all this other stuff, like yeah, a lot of people are going to be raising them. That's not indoctrinating them. That's raising your kids because you're too lazy to do it yourself, or you're just awful at your job. Like there's that too. Like, <clears throat> I don't know. I was actually surprised, like, with this whole baby food shortage. Like, the first thing I thought of was, like, wow, this, why is there a baby like baby food shortage? Like, where are all these good conservative Christian women? Shouldn't they be, like, breastfeeding, like, everybody? Like, you know, I thought, thought every life was precious, but I guess not every life is precious, and it certainly doesn't deserve anything, uh, like, you know, wholesome, like, breast milk or something like that. That You should, like, hey, I'm surprised that argument didn't come out, like... Like the, I'm just expecting like some 1873 woman in a bonnet that kind of looks like the, the one duck in Foghorn Leghorn. Anybody? No, no, no. <laughs> Assume her name is like Agnes. I know. Beatrice. I don't know. Just expected that woman to be like formula is the devil. Like just like foosball. Like I, I don't, I don't even know what the rules are. It's like almost impossible for me to keep up anymore. So. But so I was going to talk about Florida being stupid. But since we've covered that a million times. <clears throat> This is something I only touched upon maybe a week or two ago, and I'm not entirely sure who needs to hear this kind of stuff. So I'm just gonna I'm gonna say like I I have, I have documents, <laughs> I have documents, <laughs> and I don't know. It feels it feels like it's gonna be boring. Like I find this kind of stuff super interesting because I do. I've always been interested in the way government works, and not just because of that catchy song about how a bill becomes a law, but that did not hurt. Um, but I think I think it's important to see how government works. First of all, I think it's important to know how government works, and then to see actually how it works. And that that tends to be like some of my biggest problems whenever I deal with like conservative people that just like argue against me, and they just want to label me as a liberal or whatever because I don't agree with them like that's not entirely how that works like I tend I tend to watch how government does its job because I find it interesting like yeah I'm I'm I believe in more democratic causes because they tend to be more socially liberal and I believe in a lot of those things I don't believe in all of them like I don't like I am might surprise you to know that I am actually not for debt forgiveness for loans uh, I am partially like I am I am okay with partial debt forgiveness I think a portion of it should be covered and I think that people that are making that kind of sacrifice and investing in themselves deserve either next to nothing loans from the government or some help some assistance I just I just do we're trying to make our country great uh, by not sending people to college and by uh, basically enslaving them to thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars of debt, um, you know, I think it, I think it's, I think it's problematic. And I know that people like are always like, well, you know, you made an agreement, and you decided to take this loan. It's like, how much of an agreement is it? Like, do you know any like seniors or juniors right now in high school that like, yeah, I think I'm just going to take a year to fund myself, or I'm just going to go work? Like, it's barely acceptable. They are funneling you into like, there's college fairs like all the time. Like, it's what you do, and like. I would argue that it, there's more peer pressure to go to college than there is to smoke weed. And I think that smoking weed, way better. Like, way, way better. You heard it here last on the Hard Rock Lunchbox. So anyway, um, what is what is that saying? Like, don't... Like, 
hear what hear what they say, but watch what they do, right? Like that's the that's the important part. Now, and this was something that I, I touched upon a couple of weeks ago when the uh, Alito uh, majority opinion was leaked from the Supreme Court. And the only reason I'm going over it today is because I think a lot of people are not understanding how how this works and how this worked uh, and, and how this happened. And the reason I considered it for today is there is a massive walkout of schools. I think it's planned for today. It might even be going on right now. Uh, that they are protesting, I guess, the Supreme Court you know, almost decision. Because don't forget, like, Supreme Court hasn't ruled on anything. Basically, Alito just, you know, they leaked his homework, right? They le- leaked his rug grab. It could have just been in, as easily like a book report on Finland, right? Like, well, I guess you would do a book report on Finland. But like a, a report on Finland, right? That's basically what that is. You know, it's gross national product. Like, they eat a lot of herring. It's dark there. Um, that kind of stuff. Um, so it's not the actual court opinion, but it. It's authentic, right? And we know that six of the nine justices on there have basically said over and over that Roe is settled law, and they think it's you know not this like in their confirmation hearings. But we also know for a fact that the people appointed them appointed them because they were set on overturning Roe v. Wade. Like, if if you think that that's not the case, like it's not even like I'm making it up. It's not even conjecture. It's not even like just a considered considered opinion. Like this is actually what happened. Like people have actually stated that, and I don't. I don't understand why people don't understand that. Like, this is literally like, yo, dude, the door is closed. Like, no, I don't think it is. Like, I don't think they would close that door. Like, the door is closed. Like, the door is closed. You know, Ro- Ronald Reagan came up. It's like, close that door. And they spent the next 40 years closing that door. It's a stated goal. Like, it was a public... Like, that was what people were running on to get elected into politics. Like, do you not see this? Like... Why do you think we all know... Okay, ask yourself this. Why do you think we all know Roe v. Wade? What other court cases do you know? What other court cases do you know, like by name? The reason you know that one is because it keeps coming up. The reason it keeps coming up is because it's been part of our politics since 1973. And the reason it's really, really loud over the past 20 to 40 years is because it's been a wedge issue that the Republican side, and I'm not blaming them because they can, they're allowed to have whatever opinion they want, but they have been making this a political issue for 40 years. And the, the I guess the left was like, ah. And I know for a fact because I've seen people on the left be like yeah roe is settled law in fact neil gorsuch i think it was gorsuch in his confirmation hearing said when asked about roe v wade he said roe is settled law that's stare decisis that's what that means right like this is what the the supreme court like we'd never we'd never overturn it like that's what they that's what they said now you got to watch what they do the stated objective of the conservative party, the Republican Party, for the past 20 to 40 years has been to overturn Roe v. Wade. They denied uh, Merrick Garland uh, 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 so much as a hearing to get on the Supreme Court. That's Mitch McConnell. Mitch McConnell basically violated the con- his duties under the Constitution of the advice and consent and didn't even hold a hearing for Merrick Garland. As far as I'm concerned, he abdicated his duties. And in one of several major mistakes I blame President Obama directly for, he should have just put him on the court as a recess appointment. I, I think that's exactly what he should have done. They abdicated their job. They're like, all right, thanks, man. You didn't do it, so I'm going to put him on. They left a vacancy on the Supreme Court for months. Months. And then President Trump got to put in three Supreme Court justices. And now the court is six to three with a conservative majority. And I said at the time, that's probably it for the rest of my lifetime in terms of what rights and liberties are going to be defended by the Supreme Court. But so there's a big walkout today and a big protest plan today, and it will accomplish absolutely nothing. It doesn't matter. The Supreme Court is not elected. Once they're on there, they're on there until they retire or they die. This majority is not going to change. Even if you could sway John Roberts somehow, it's not going to be a bunch of girls that are taking a day off from school. It'll be like legal scholars and all that other stuff because John Roberts is actually still worried about his reputation. They always refer to the Supreme Court by the the, 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 the chief Supreme Court justice, like the Rehnquist Court, the Warren Court. This is the Roberts Court. The Roberts Court is going to be remembered for rolling back human rights tremendously. He doesn't want that. Roberts, 
from what I can glean, is not a huge asshole. He does have his ideology. He's actually more of the kind of Republican and conservatives that I like. He's got an ideology. He sort of sticks to it. But he's not an asshole like uh, Clarence Thomas or Samuel Alito. Like, you read some of these stories about Samuel Alito. He is a disgusting human being and has been for years. And Kavanaugh, there's no way Kavanaugh didn't rape at least one or two women. There's no way. And, you know, because Elon Musk is buying Twitter, I get to say that now because it's free speech. What do you think about that? (sighs) Anyway, I feel like I've talked my entire time away, but I did want to say this one thing um, because I underlined some stuff in this news article that I thought was doing a pretty good job. That's actually not bad. And the the dude goes on to it's a constitutional law professor. He goes on to say... um, He starts by saying, overruling Roe has been the stated goal of the Republican Party, repeated in its presidential platforms in every election since the decision was handed down in 1973, with a 63 Republican majority in firm control of the court. That's what I was saying. Like, maybe even Roberts flipped. It doesn't matter. It's five to four. Uh, The end of the the end of Roe should should have been expected. And that's exactly what I was saying. Um, But this is the thing I was saying a couple weeks ago that I thought was really important. I was I had to actually frame it and change the way that I was thinking about things and maybe maybe this will do uh, for you as well but the overruling of Roe also conflicts with a general sense in that the Supreme Court usually expands people's rights it doesn't take them away this understanding falls neatly into the story of progress that we like to tell ourselves American history moves forward it doesn't go back pay attention here's here's the money That's a comforting story, but it isn't true. American history does go back, and the Supreme Court does take rights away. The most striking example of this occurred after the greatest expansion of constitutional rights, the Reconstruction Amendments. Now, the Reconstruction Amendments are the 13th Amendment banned slavery, the 14th Amendment uh, established uh, birthright citizenship, uh, and that was including the formerly enslaved as full members, blah, 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 blah. It gave those new citizens and everyone else rights of liberty and equality to protect them from oppression by the states. The The original Bill of Rights protected people from oppression by the federal government. The 14th Amendment gave them uh, protection from uh, oppression by the states. And then the 15th Amendment prohibited racial discrimination with respect to the right to the vote. The right to vote. Uh, all the amendments gave power, uh, Congress power to pass laws for their enforcement, blah, 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 blah. It worked for a while. Reconstructed southern governments operated integrated schools and police forces. They reformed divorce laws and provided social services on a scale never before seen in the South. Uh, But then they started resisting, and they started resisting violently. It took the U.S. Army to keep them in line. And so I'll end it with this this part. Um, As a way of settling the disputed election of 1876, that's another show, the federal troops ended their supervision of the South. What followed was called redemption. Whites took back control, often through violent coups led by white supremacist paramilitary organizations. And very quickly, the rights promised by the Reconstruction Amendments went away, and the Supreme Court did not help. It read the 14th Amendment narrowly. It struck down a federal law prohibiting racial discrimination by restaurants and inns, commenting that... At some point, blacks must cease to be the special favorites of the laws. This was in 1883, when slavery was only 18 years in the past. Yeah, at some point. The Supreme Court is not, and has traditionally not been interested in protecting your rights. I said it a couple weeks ago, and I'm saying it again right now. Any sort of protest or any of that bullshit is not going to do anything. The Supreme Court is back to what it was classically supposed to be. The constitutional era we na- we live in now is getting the name it deserves, the Second Redemption. I am telling you, and I printed out all this other stuff because I wanted to talk about Griswold versus Connecticut, Planned Parenthood versus Casey. I definitely wanted to talk about, um, what's, uh, what's the other one? Um, The one for uh, gay rights that allowed gay marriage. Where is it? Um, Ah, Forget it. It's the 2015 decision that allowed for gay marriage. Sam Alito said abortion was not mentioned in the Constitution. Therefore, it has no basis to be set in uh, Supreme Court law. Either does privacy. And privacy is what is the basis of contraception, also not mentioned in the Constitution, and gay rights 
and also not mentioned in the Constitution. And it's also the thing that struck down the Texas sodomy ban. Yeah. Texas had a sodomy ban. Sounds like a lot of fun, Texas. Great job. If you honestly think that Roe v. Wade is it, man, you are sorely mistaken. And I'm sorry if I'm bringing anybody down. It's kind of too bad. The only thing you have left to do is to vote. Vote your interest, people. If you honestly think that this is the world you want to live in, like, vote it. Like, seriously. Hey, man, I've been looking for a way to oppress minorities and women my entire life. I just don't have it in me, so I'm kidding. That's not at all what I'm saying. You can vote, and come November, it's going to make a difference. But I will tell you that the dude in Pennsylvania that's going to be running for governor, he is a 2020 election denier. He is absolutely anti-minorities and anti-women, and he won by a lot, which tells you that even the people in the great state of Pennsylvania may not be thinking the way we're thinking, and we may not be in the country we should be in anymore. Like, I'm not talking about secession, but... I don't know that I wouldn't leave if New York and California and Jersey and like wanted to form our own United States. Like I'm just, I, I, I would, I would definitely sign a move on poll if that were the, if that were the case. But I will tell you, unless this really stirs stuff up, the Republicans are going to take control of the House and probably the Senate, and then eventually in 2024 they're going to take the White House. And all segues aside. You will find no shelter here.